Welcome back, guys, to another round table. My name is Adam. I have Rusman. Hello. Victor. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to talk about this company that some of you have requested in our comments. So we thought we will listen to them and you know, have a look at this particular company and yep. whether um, there's something to look at there. All right. So this company is none other than Comfort Del Grow, yeah. which is a part of a transport duopoly in Singapore. All right. yep. It used to be a really popular dividend stock before the pandemic. And then the <laughs> pandemic happened, things are different right now. So we're going to have a look at an update of what the company is like, what the dividend is, and you know whether it's worth looking at. All right. So before we dive into all of that, maybe just a quick overview of uh, Comfort Degro's business. Yeah, so Comfort Degro, they are in the mobility business, right? So any, anytime you want to get from point A to point B, right? Comfort Degro will come into the picture, right? Whether you're going to take a taxi, are you going to take a bus, or you're going to take a train in Singapore, okay, definitely you're going to get uh, no, Comfort Degro involved, okay, one way or another. Okay, so they also have businesses, not just in Singapore, they also have businesses in uh, UK, all right? They also have businesses in Australia, China, right? And also even Malaysia, all right? So again, there's going to be a big business, okay? We're just going to zoom in more and put more focus on Singapore side because that account about of the business okay so for in singapore they run uh you know taxi business as you know so they under the brand uh comfort degro and city cap okay so if you guys probably have hail a cab before okay i mean nowadays you set them hail right yeah. nowadays you just uber or no just do a wolf whistle and then it comes oh there's yes no, there's no uber in singapore <laughs> no uber, it's grab. Right? so <laughs> grab yeah. is the app that you can use it uh, and of course like what adam said they are one of those uh you know, big market yeah. monopoly or, or rather they actually have a 62 percent uh, market share based on the number of fleets that they have okay this is as of end of 2020 Two, okay, mm-hmm. so this taxi business, of course, uh, the number of fleets, of course, if you based on the market share, it sounds quite impressive. Okay, this guy's wow, it's got so much market share. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the past they also have used to market share, but if you look at the trends of number of taxi in Singapore, actually has been declining. Okay, so six years ago it was about above twelve thousand, and today we are looking at about you know, six thousand plus, so almost half. Mm-hmm. And this is across the board, right? Comfort, uh, City Cap, Transcap, SMRT, all of them are on a declining trend. Okay, mainly because of the uh, right. uh, ride hailing, right? Yeah. Since Grab, Uber that came into the picture five, six years ago, right? Where, where they were very popular at that point of time. Okay, so taxi business wasn't doing very good. Okay, so anyway, that is just a quick introduction for the taxi business. And they also have the uh, public transportation site, which they run uh, bus services for the government. Okay, I mean, they used to own those buses, but now they mo- mostly, uh, I mean, become the operator for those uh, bus services, right? So they, under the brand called SBS Transit. Okay, they also run uh, the train station in Singapore. So you have Northeast Line, and then uh, which is the purple line, and then Downtown Line, which is the blue line. And of course, uh, you, they also run uh, LRT in in Sengkang and Pungo. Okay, so all in all, they have, I think, running 78 stations with a fleet of 192 trains mm-hmm. in Singapore. That's why I say if you take public transport, most likely that you are contributing to SBS or Comfort Degro, uh, you know, income. Yeah, some <laughs> people don't know that one of the particular MRT lines is actually run by SBS. SBS, yep. yeah. yeah. Then and when SBS is owned by Comfort Delgo. Yeah. yeah, and then when the, tr- the train the line breaks down. down, then they blame SMRT. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually SBS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and in terms of uh, you know real reliability, I think SBS has done pretty well as okay. well compared to uh, SMRT. Okay, so, yeah. And, yeah, if you look at the average uh, daily ridership for the public transportation in Singapore, it's still way below the pandemic level. Mm-hmm. Okay, so be it public bus or MRT or all of them are down okay mainly because of the new uh, way of you know doing things right now okay yeah. we mostly work from it's hybrid, home, work from home. Yeah. yeah so that is still about I think at this stage it's still 88 81 percent of the pre-pandemic level okay in terms but of it's, right, but it's recovering or yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah and of course that is public transportation business and of course if you look at the uh, other businesses they have, they also have the car inspection business and non-vehicle inspection business that's under Viacom. Yeah. Okay. So that business, again, it's also uh, service-based. Okay. And of course, they also run this uh, Comfort Dago Engineering where, you know, you go send your car for repairs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they have few uh, branches in, in, in Singapore. And of course, they repair mostly their own taxis, their buses, right? And of course, they do also uh, external cars as well okay and of course they also have a driving center right so mm-hmm. if you uh, how, to think learn how to drive how to learn how to drive in okay. singapore you may have gone to this center called comfort Degro driving center and uh, that's mm-hmm. one of those center that they run 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So they have three businesses: uh, public transport, uh, con- taxi, com- taxi, and inspection. Inspection yep. and of course engineering. Okay. Yep. So, but a part of it is uh, going to be your three main one: public yep. transport, right? And then taxi, and of course the uh, Vicom. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you look at the in terms of revenue by segment, the public transport, taxi, and inspection and testing actually accounts about ninety two point two percent of the total revenue already. Yeah. Then if you look in terms of let's say operating profits, right? Uh, the public transport taxi and the inspection actually accounts about uh, 88.8% of the total profit before tax, right? Uh, so, uh, sorry, operating profits, right? Yeah. So, but if you look at the, ta- the taxi business, right? Uh, right now in f- the latest financial full year of 2022, uh, it accounts about 19.3% of the operating profit. But before that, in 2015, they actually accounts 36.4% of the operating profit. Mm-hmm. So that means, right, the taxi business, right, since 2015, you now actually been affected uh, heavily by the uh, right healing, mm-hmm. right? Because I think you can ask yourself, when is the last time you actually took a taxi? Mm-hmm. Right, I think most people they they take uh private hired car right now, right? Unless you have family, yeah. so you have you are forced to you know take taxi because you have ch- children, and usually if you want to take private hired car, you have to have a uh, child seats and all this. So if you look in terms of the operating profit from the public transport services, right? Uh, actually the business was doing very well from two thousand fifteen to two thousand nineteen. Then it was affected by the COVID pandemic because of less ridership. Uh, that, yeah. that caused the problem but since then 2020 to 2022 you can see that the operating profits is actually picking up uh, right now so we we can expect that that segment to actually start to recover but if you were to look at the taxi business before uh, the pandemic happened right the the profit operating profits is already decreasing from 163.9 million to 104.2 million in 2019 and when the COVID pandemic happened they went into negative 64.4 million and since then they have been recovering Right, and uh, of course, the management expect the the taxi business to continue recover. Mm-hmm. So I think the key thing about Comfort Delgo, right, is actually the taxi business that is really affecting them, which used to contribute significantly one third of their profits, and right now it's like less than that. Yeah. Then if you look go back to the inspection and testing business, uh, it's rather stable. Um, also affected during the COVID pandemic, but after that it started to recover. It it is over hover around the thirty plus million range, very stable, flat, nothing much. Vehicle inspection in Singapore. Uh, not much of growth, very stable. It's just that uh, the main concern is that if there's an electric, if we become an electric car city, right, mm-hmm. then the inspection, the number of inspections is going to be less for electric car. Yeah. Right. So that's the big concern. But then if you look at the Vicom, right, actually the main profit generating is not the vehicle inspecting, it's actually the building inspection. So that's still uh, yeah. a way to buffer out all yeah. from all these vehicle things. We have so many buildings in Singapore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. So these three businesses, I think if you have a look at it, uh, public transport seems to be doing well. Uh, uh, and then taxi is the one that's bringing it down. Yep. So I think Comfort Delgro is one company that really was affected by the pandemic. If you take a look at the share price before the pandemic, I think it had a, at a high of 280, yep. around there, 280 per share. And now as of this recording, it's about $1.20. Yeah. So anyone looking at this, you go, hmm, could it ever <laughs> go back to its glory days? And if you did, I mean, you'd be making like two more than two times your money back. Yeah. And this is a company that we as Singaporeans use every day. Yep. Yeah, yeah. A lot of us. Uh, so that is the question. But I think the big question mark here is the taxi business. Correct. Is, is the landscape <laughs> has changed permanently. Do you think it could ever recover? Yeah, uh, I, I think it's very hard for them to even recover to uh, the glo- glory days, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I think the habits have changed in Singapore, mm-hmm. right? Uh, if you do not have kids, you're probably going to take private hire car, as I mentioned just now. Right, so uh, I think uh, people are so used to it, and 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 I don't really even hear for taxi on the streets right now. Mm-hmm. So I think that business is um a bit being disrupted, but but of course comfort is also not just sitting still. They also created their own apps, uh, for you to get the taxi right from their app, and also to also allow private hire cut in inside their apps also. Yeah. So they are, they are also doing something, but then the business is really. It's very competitive because in the past, there's only that few player they dominate the most, mm-hmm. right? But right now, it's not only them. They have to they have to fight with their existing taxi player and on top of that, they have to fight with a lot of other private hire. Private hire, yeah. yeah. So that, I don't think that's ever going to change. Yeah. So yeah. the as you can see that I mentioned earlier on, the number of taxi fleets has been on the declining and this doesn't seem it's going to stop anytime soon. Uh, 
And I've actually seen people hailing for cabs on the street, okay, and the cab driver just, just didn't stop. Yeah, because <laughs> they have a, they have something to they have a booking. Yeah. Yeah. They have a booking to yeah, go yeah. after. Right? Yeah. Even sometimes they show green, you know, yeah. available, yeah. but they are yeah. not stopping. Okay, so yeah. I think hailing is through the app is <laughs> yeah. a new norm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so taxi business, I think uh, it's going to be very tough moving down the road. So I think you have to yeah. write this because off. now yeah. it's it's again my share, right? Mm. Every yeah. time I talk about. Uh, getting from one place to another place, the first name came out in my mind will be Grab, mm -hmm. right? So I think I will look at Grab first, then I will compare with the the rest yeah. of things. So so the the business is not it's been taken off the my share, right? In the yeah. past, is if you think okay, comfort, I I I cannot hear the taxi. Okay, never mind. I go to comfort. I call for booking, yeah. and then I just pay the I think fifty cent at the point of time or three dollar. I can't remember. Well, the, calling for a taxi. That was that was a like, so But then you have, you call comfort because they got the most flea. You won't want <laughs> okay. to call the other smaller players because yeah. the flea is less, right? Yeah. But now it's different. Now it's like you will you know look at Grab first, then you will go to other. Do you know uh, where I had to call for a taxi in Spain? <laughs> 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 I wanted to book a taxi and I realized they, they didn't have any online submission forms. Okay. I had to call them to oh, get a taxi uh. to my to the airport and I had to speak in Spanish. <laughs> 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 so I had to do like a very quick Google Translate and at this date and time then I put down the phone. I had no idea whether the guy would turn up. Because <laughs> there's no confirmation, there's no email, there's nothing. Oh, the, the, yeah. the lady on the phone said, yeah, sure, we'll be there. And then on the day itself, you really hope the guy's going to be there. Oh my God. <laughs> so, I mean, he was there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that was an experience, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, the taxi business also in China probably will contribute some because that was, uh, segment that was actually contributing quite a bit before the pandemic, right? But it was only still a uh, single digit region, right? So even if it recovers, which they are expected to recover, uh, it's not going to contribute a big sum all of what that whole taxi business okay because the bar of the business again if you go back it's really heavily tilted towards the um public transportation mm -hmm. side okay which is the bus and the rails and of course the public trans transportation side doesn't just cover singapore right they also run uh scheduled bus and unscheduled buses in australia okay across the different you know region in australia and uh, in United Kingdom, also they also run uh, buses, okay, mm. for the government, okay. And of course, in also New Zealand, they have just won this, uh, you know, real uh, one of the real to become the first real operators and you know, outside of uh, Singapore itself. That's for actually comfort that grow itself, okay, which is a uh, no, not quite impressive, mm -hmm. right? But again, these are all you no, know, it's not contributing that much, okay. And only Australia is actually contribute quite a big sum, right? Uh, I would say again, the, maybe around teens kind of uh, region, okay. A part of it is still going to yeah. comes from the public transportation. And of course, in the past few years, the Australian dollar have weakened against the Sing yeah. Sing dollar, and that also affects mm -hmm. the uh, profits, right? Because of the forex exchange. Right, but there's room for expansion yep. in this area right public transport because they have to just, yeah. they just have to be a really good operator they could actually do Correct. a lot of yep. uh, but, but then this industry again they need to beat against yeah, with other right. players out there so even in Singapore we have to move towards the bus contracting model where it used to be you know run by SMRT and SBS, okay? So these are the two main operators. And I think in 2014, 2015, the government has since shifted to bus contracting model where they no longer have to invest in uh, physical asset. They uh, now probably will ask government to buy the physical asset and then the government will maintain it. They will just run uh, you know, as it is. So they'll get the licensing, the uh, operator fees, right, for, for that. But this yeah. business is doing well. It's, it's doing yep. quite well. Of course, it's been disrupted by the pandemic. Now, I think we are you know, recovering quite well. So in 2023, we should be able to see more growth coming from this uh, public transportation side. Got it. So the, the question is, is that because you know public transport is doing well for Comfort Del Grow, and within public transport, the biggest contributor is SBS. SBS, SBS, yes, right? Yeah. And SBS is actually listed separately, independently, I mean, separately as a yeah. as a stock itself on the Singapore exchange. Yep. So the question could be, so why don't I just invest in SBS directly since that the, that's the best performing e e e part e of Comfortable? Yeah. yeah, in fact, that will actually eliminate the kind of risk that you might face with their taxi business, which one day they might write it off, right? Okay. And I don't know right, whether that's going to happen because that's still their main core uh, business, right? But with the Singapore side, of course, SBS is one of the main contributors. The other one also is actually Vicom, mm -hmm. right? And of course, they also have their driving center and stuff like that. But again, Singapore is 75, 80% of the core, right? So if you look at their public transportation side, which I think it's the green shoots that we're looking at because government has been pushing towards the green uh, you know, environment where, you know, they have been trying to 
get all of us to take public transport, right? And then they're expanding the rail network. Okay? Raising the COE prices. And then raising the COE <laughs> prices. <laughs> ERP prices, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, they are expanding the, you know, uh, bicycle path, right? Cycling path. It's and a then good the thing. It's a good thing. Bus yeah. lanes. Right? All yeah. these are, you know, tilted towards more call sharing. Yeah. Okay, So you yeah. emit less carbon, right? Mm. And of course, that will be built towards better world, right? In the future. And this is something where I think... Uh, SBS will stand in a very good uh, position to benefit from the government initiatives. And that's why I think uh, you know, SBS is a much safer bet you know, mm. if you are looking to invest in this you know, yep. industry, okay. yeah, yep. transport industry. All right. Yep. I mean, there's a separate discussion. Maybe we'll do yeah. one on SBS itself. <laughs> yep. But let's go back to Comfort Del Gro. So, uh, I mean, back to its price now. It's at $1.20 at the time of this recording. Uh, the yield is about 3.8%. Yeah. All right. So, question is, you know, how would you value Comfort Del Gro? Um, yep. Do you think there's still some growth in this company? What's what's a good investment for yep. this company? So, I think the the issue of Comfort Del Gro is that we, the there's 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 the the two concern is first concern is the taxi business that is declining. Second concern is that their dividends actually reduce. Even pre pandemic, they already start to reduce the dividend. Right. In fact, now the dividend is much lower than the pre pandemic. Uh, dividend. So the key is to get a sustainable dividend. What is the sustainable dividend okay. for Comfort Delgo? So my philosophy is always like this, right? A- every stock is a good investment if you pay at the right price, mm-hmm. right? So we need to find what's the right price for uh, Comfort Delgo, right? So the, the the key is to be very, very conservative when we value this company. So let's say if we were to look at Comfort Delgo's operating profits, right, of all their business is about 232 Two hundred thirty-three point seven million, right, excluding accessional gains and all this, right. So that's their operating profit before tax. And let's say I want to be very conservative. I assume that the taxi business is going to be dis- disappear, gone, hundred percent, okay. right. So that's fifty-two point one million off the two hundred thirty-three million, right. Which in the real life it, it will not be totally gone, right. Mm-hmm. But I just being very conservative over here. So let's say that that will give me about hundred eighty-one point six million. And I look at the two thousand fifteen to the latest. 2022, right? The tax average right, is about 20%. Okay. So I take 20% tax off. So the net profit after tax should be roughly about 145.28 million. Then I look at their previous three uh, years of uh, average payout is about 65%. So 65% of the 145 million is about 94.4 million. Okay. Right. In dividends. Yeah, in dividends. Yeah. Then you divide it by the number of shares. That will work out to be a sustainable dividend, excluding the taxi business, about 4.3 cents. Mm-hmm. So now you know that, okay, this is the 4.3 cents that I'm looking at. Then the key is what you do you want to get? Okay. If you want to get 4% you, based on the 4.3 cents, that will be about $1.08. Cents. If you want 5% you, that's about 86 cents. If you want 6% you, that's about 7.1 cents, right? So in 71 in, cents. Uh, 7.1 cents, yeah. As in for the shares, right? Uh, so, sorry, 70, 71 cents, sorry. 71 cents. Uh, yeah. 86 cents and $1.08, cents, yeah, yep. correct. So, so the key about investing is that you need to be conservative. You need to be very, very patient, right? Uh, when the market gives you the price, you does not need to bite it, right? Mm-hmm. You just have to wait. You wait until the time where the odds is in your favor, mm-hmm. right? Then you bite it, right? The, your chance of making money, right, mm-hmm. is higher because you already covered your downside, mm-hmm. right? So at the end of the day, I think comfort dollar can be attractive if the market continue to push the share price down and it gave me a risk reward very high ratio, right? Risk reward ratio very high, mm-hmm. right? That I know that my downside is covered. Mm-hmm. Right. So so that's the key. What you do you want to look at, right? What you would you look at? Yeah. So I, I think for me is <laughs> because if you look at the current you in the market, right? Recently mm-hmm. I just heard the T bill is like five plus percent. Okay. Right. So if I were to pay comfort they'll grow now at three point eight percent, then I still have the risk of the taxi business and still have to wait for them to recover. So I think my yeah. money is make more sense investing in the T bills, right? Yeah. Just okay. six percent, six, six within six months to twelve months, I get my five percent. Okay. Right. So the question is that the you that you get right must beat the T bills. Okay. Right. At this moment, so and you must if, have a bit more than that because yes, of the correct. risk you're taking. Yeah. yeah. Correct. So that's why I say, um, looking at six percent, or maybe five percent, that is a much a decent okay. value for, uh, for comfort. So that that will be at eighty six seventy one cent to eighty six cents. All right. right. So at least five percent you, but of course with that five percent you, assuming the share price comes down, uh, then you gotta relook the fundamentals again. Yeah. Because of why the share price is coming down. Yeah. Unless the other way is that could they increasing their, their dividends and then they push us up yeah, the yield as well. Yeah. But of course, there's also cases where, um, 
because the the SBS business is recovering, mm-hmm. right? Because now I'm assuming that everything is at this point. Yeah, there's no, there's but, no growth. But the business okay. can recover. Yeah. Right. So the SBS business can recover. The Vicom business can also do well. Mm-hmm. Right. The taxi business also recovering. I told you the management expecting the taxi business to recover. But now I ask, I'm I'm assuming that the taxi business is gone. So I'm being very very conservative. But that's the thing about investing. If I be very conservative and I still can able to get that price, mm-hmm. my downside is covered. Yep. So you only can get upside. I mean, as a saying, you take yeah. care of your downside and then let the, the upside, upside take care of yeah. itself, right? Yeah. yeah. So basically, you manage your risk yeah. and then just yeah. wait for yeah. it to, to bounce back. Yeah, if, it's just like what Buffett said, you yeah. don't need to swing right? Right. when the ball comes, like the baseball. You don't need to swing. You just yeah. have to wait for the right chance. Yeah, right? There's no, there are no strikeouts. Yeah. 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 So for me, I think, uh, well, um, uh, if you look at the comfort that grow, of course, they have many businesses across different countries. Right? That makes things complicated, right? So uh, I will look at their subsidiary, okay, either Viacom or SBS, which both are listed, by mm-hmm. the way, okay, mm-hmm. and then focus the one that I'm more interested in, okay? So in the case, I mentioned that, you know, public transport, I think, is a green shoot. Mm-hmm. I think it's, some, it's a sector where the government will continue to push, right? Even though COVID has disrupted the way we commute, uh, but that is a sector where, you know, as Singapore continues to welcome more population, uh, into the country, more people come to the country, even though they no longer say it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we expect that the population will continue to grow at a slower pace. I think public transport is still an area where it will continue to grow, mm-hmm. right? So that is an uh, interesting area to look at, right? SBS, and of course, they are now a satellite business model, right? Yeah. <laughs> they, they no longer have to invest in buses, and then now LTA have to pay them for all the buses that they own. Mm-hmm. They used to bought, now they, they bought before, okay? Yeah. So that is a, you know, a company that to me is less complication, you know, um, and then the, the the outlook is still looks quite decent, okay, especially with the world opening up, tourists coming in. Yeah, ridership will continue to pick up, okay. Perhaps it may take uh, three more years to reach back to the pre pandemic level because of the new world pattern, but uh, it, we, we are in the good, good, good momentum. Yeah. All right, so I think that's a pretty good uh, summary of what, yep. com- what we think about Comfort Delgro. I mean, like I said, pre pre pandemic, this is one of the favorite dividend stocks among investors here. It's Transport <laughs> is something that you just can't live without. Yeah. But you just never expected the pandemic to happen and then yes. all of us just didn't go out. Yep. <laughs> and then the transport business comes to the ground to a halt. Yeah. Uh, but now it's kind of, kind of like coming, coming back. Coming back and yeah. then mm-hmm. uh, maybe it could, well, you know, even like you said, your, your valuation is very conservative. Yep. Uh, and that will give you this amount of uh, yield yes. at this price. All right. So um, we hope that was a good summary of Comfort Del Grove. A couple of you like uh, requested for it, and I think we we thought we just have a look at it because yeah. this is a company that we've been tracking for some time as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are a lot of, getting a lot of questions from our members, you know, look, looking whether yeah. to invest in Comfort Del Grove. That was like 2015, 2016, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we've been tracking it yeah. uh, along with SBS and all that. So we hope that was really helpful for you. Uh, please do your own due diligence. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell anything. This is just what we've found out for ourselves, and we're sharing our research yeah. with you. This is still just at the top I mean there's so many things you can look at yes, yep. yeah. yeah, and you need to go a bit deeper as well but we hope you enjoyed that round table and uh, that's pretty much it alright guys yep. yeah. alright so my name is Adam Rusmin Victor thank, thank you. you so much and we hope you enjoyed this round table thank you for submitting your suggestions if you have any more suggestions you want us to have a look at uh, and we think it's something that you know everyone else will learn from it as well we will maybe cover that in the round table so put them in the comment section any questions about this comment section as well if you like this round table please hit the like button tell us you're doing a good job of course subscribe to our round table many more count, uh, ch- round tables coming up and we'll love to see you around again